So I've got a really quick and simple tip today, and this is especially going to apply to people who are using Studio One in a tracking scenario. So if you are a studio and you're having different artists come in and you're recording overdubs or recording vocals or drums or whatever the case is, I really think it's worth it to go into your metronome setup and create some presets. So we've got two different ways that we can enter the metronome setup. We can either click this little wrench icon at the very bottom, and then this will bring up the metronome setup, or I have it mapped out to a key command. So if I go over here and I type in metronome setup, I don't think this was mapped out by default. I think this was something that I chose a, a while back and I've just left it so that I can really quickly just bring this up if I need to make any changes. So what I'd recommend doing is taking a look at some of the presets that are available here. In addition to that, if you wanted to create your own custom sound, we have the ability to add sounds. So for example, you could have a kick drum and then you could have snare samples. So your accent could be a kick and then your beat would be a snare sample. And then you could even do like a side stick or something for your offbeat. I actually like the offbeat, especially when you do slower tempos, it really helps people, but I only have it dialed in a little bit. I'm going to play my default click. now. I'm recording my main outs through the listen bus. So just assume that these parameters that I'm adjusting here are affecting the main out. So if we take a listen, I'll make sure my click is active. Just a tiny bit of an offbeat. Okay, so a couple things I wanna make mention of here. If you are recording people who have recorded in other studios, I really think it's worth it to check out some of these presets. So take a look over here. I have my MH2023 click. We'll load this preset. This has that slight offbeat and I can very easily dial this back if the artist doesn't like it. Then the next one I have is I have an LPX click, which is using the Logic Pro sounds. These ones are really nice because they don't bleed that much in headphones, especially if you're using headphones that don't have the greatest uh, cancellation in terms of being closed back. And then last but not least, I have a MH2023 PT click and that's for Pro Tools. It's amazing that if an artist gets used to the certain sound of a click, it can really throw them off. So if they've been tracking in Pro Tools at most of the studios they've been working with, or Logic Pro, or they track at home with Logic Pro or Pro Tools, for example, at least load some basic sounds and create a preset in case that's the click sound that they want to work with. Now, the other thing you'll notice here, if I load the default click, let's take a listen to this. This is really, really loud, especially if you play this against something in terms of the way that I like to gain stage. Take a look at this. I've pulled this down minus 11. That really pops out a lot. And the other thing is, if you're working with an artist and you have a Q-mix and you activate the Q-mix on the output, the metronome by default will be at a zero level. So the minute you activate your click track globally, you might like blow their ears out if they're listening to a different headphone mix and they have their levels very loud. So what I've done in my presets is I've actually gain staged these more in line to where I like to work. Now there was a change that happened in Studio One, I think it was maybe in 6.2 or 6.2.1. We used to see the click meters over here as the metronome was playing. If I mute this, we used to be able to see the click happening on the tracks or the outputs that you had the metronome activated on. I'm really not sure if this is a new design behavior, but the one thing I did notice is that if, for example, I put a limiter on this and I crank the gain level, we don't see any changes in terms of the click level. So the click is obviously being merged in with your main outs after the fact and after any processing that you've done. That may have always been the case, but we now no longer see this visually in the meters as of the time that I'm doing this video, which is version 6.2.1. As I was mentioning, with respect to gain staging, this is gonna be really however you like to work. I typically tend to work at a level where I have everything gain staged and I kind of go by using a VU meter. And typically I'll set this to either minus 18 or minus 12. And I like to see this visually just jumping around. Now, the other thing I do is I'll have a level meter here because I want to monitor the actual LUFS or LKFS levels that I'm working at. So on my click presets that I've created, all three of them for the Studio One click, which I actually don't mind the sound of, the Logic Pro click and the Pro Tools click, I am having my click come in 
so that it sits nicely against the way that I typically like to gain stage. And if I activate my click, Now, if I need a little bit of wiggle room, I can basically dial this up 3.5 dB or pull it down a little bit, but I find that having a click preset that is not coming in, hitting like zero dBFS full scale is really useful because for the most part, I don't need to adjust it. And if I do need to adjust it, I can trim it up 3 dB. And also if I really need to adjust it, then I can bring up this accent till at least the accent pokes out over and above the mix. Now, in terms of storing these, whether you decide to load your own samples and build something, which we can do by adding a sound, and then it'll bring us to a finder window, or whether you choose to go with the sounds that are available here, we have all these different choices, and you can design your accent, your beat, and your offbeat. At the end of the day, we just need to store a preset, and then when we store a preset, it will be available over here. You can see these different ones that I've created, and I just actually recently updated all three of my clicks. Before that, I had my click set to here, which wasn't quite as loud as the stock setting, but I found that I was still having to turn it down every single time because of the way that I track it tends to be pretty conservative. So my new levels sit at about here. I have my offbeat on by default. I can take that off. And if I want to have my beat poke out a little bit more, And this is something that I wouldn't blow somebody's ears off if they had a set of headphones on and I activated their click. It's most likely going to sit in line with the way that I like to work in terms of my gain staging. Anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.